All right, now joining us is a friend of the show, Russell Holly from Android Central. How's it going, Russell? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing awesome. It's great to get you on, uh, partially because you're awesome, but also because <laughs> it means you you bring with you gifts uh, gifts of Android. Uh, Android folks were surprised with a new developer preview of Android this morning. But first things first, the really important stuff. Do we have a dessert name yet? No, we do not have an official <laughs> oh. dessert name yet. The closest that we've gotten uh, the, to to anything that even resembles a name uh, is is a little tiny teaser at the end of the announcement uh, for this this event, where it specifically said that the dessert name they weren't going to say, but the the way that it was phrased, uh, he said he was nut telling. Nut telling. Oh, oh okay. That, that's so. So it could be just it. be a really terrible joke, and it's not going to be Nutella at all. You know. Uh, but a lot of people are kind of hoping that it's Nutella. I. I, People I, really like a candy bar in a jar that you can spread on bread. So yeah, and I think it would it would I could see the icon in the in the corner, um, you know, of your notification bar. I could totally see it. Mm -hmm. uh, what it there's a ton like. of things that go with N though. So I mean, there's yeah. there's lots of things, and it was actually kind of one of the funny things that happened with Marshmallow. They did the, all of these like background videos when they launched mm -hmm. Marshmallow. Is it is not specifically desserts. Uh, the Android team refers to them as tasty treats. So mm -hmm. it could actually be something healthy for you. Oh, okay, like a well, it couldn't be a carrot because that's C, but along those lines. <laughs> Something so vegetable, Something vegetable, maybe a tasty vegetable. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, okay, so why so early? Normally, normally we're used to seeing these updates happen at Google I/O. That's not for I think a couple of months at this point. Uh, why are we suddenly being surprised by this? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. The the first is that Google I/O is going to be done in a really different format this year. You know, it's it's happening uh, down at the uh, the amphitheater instead of. Uh, you know, in the uh, the convention center, things are going to be broken out very differently. And, uh, you know, historically, we've gotten that announcement. And then, you know, 15 minutes later, the, the, the you know, schedule changes on, on the Google I.O. form to reveal all of these extra sessions for, uh, you know, the week to include all of these new things that they were hiding in order to, you know, keep the announcement secret. And they don't have to do that now, which means developers can better plan their schedules in order to to be in these sessions to get the questions that they need answered based on, you know, the information that they now have. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we've got this kind of new version of Android. What are some of the kind of key features that people are, are highlighting right now? Well, on a, on a visual side, uh, we've got uh, big changes to the notification tray. Notifications look pretty different. There's a, a lot of things that are in line when it comes to, you know, interacting with notifications. Uh, you'll, you'll see things look a little different. It's really just, uh, you know, stylistic changes. When it comes to that, we've got uh, multi-window support uh, is now all over the place, both in phones and in tablets. And it looks really great on the uh, Pixel C as well as uh, on the 6P that I've tested it on so far. And those are, those are the big you know, visual changes that you'll see as you go through. The the launcher looks very similar. The the system tray uh, looks a little different when you scroll down the first time uh, you, you pull down the, the notification tray, you'll see uh, power options across the top there where normally you would just see, you know, kind of the the icon widget and, and some of the time and stuff like that. And now when you pull down a second time, you have more of those options available to you. Uh, instead of only having them in that second window. Right, right. Um, and then I know that there's some b battery improvements. Now, part of Marshmallow was uh, this you know, feature called Doze, which helps to improve your battery when you're kind of not using the device. How is this being improved further? The explanation that we've gotten so far, it hasn't really been tested yet, uh, is that Doze is going to start working in, in kind of multiple stages now. Uh, and, and the first stage that we're going to see is when the display is off at all. Uh, and a big part of that is going to be, you know, the stopping, you know, apps from constantly reaching out and grabbing a hold of your Wi-Fi and, and you know, communicating when they shouldn't be. Uh, but it's not going to reach that deep sleep state until it's, you know, at rest like we have right now. Right. So right. this is just going to be this is like a like a separate stage to those. It's just kind of growing to, you know, keep apps in line a little more than uh, than what we have right now. Mm hmm. Um, where would you rate this as far as like a, a scale of experimental, you know, on the on the scale of being experimental for users? Like, does this not necessarily qualify for, let's say, the general consumer to to download? Because they've, they've actually kind of made some changes as far as how you can get updated to this. And I think that makes it kind of easier for people to get on board with the ex kind of the developer preview. Do you recommend that? No, not at all. Stuff is super broken right now. 
uh, there it's there are a lot of things that are very cool. It's it's very neat to kind of look at from afar. But when you do things like uh, you know have your your launcher crash and come back to a screenshot as your wallpaper, like lots of really weird things are happening right now. And it's this is what we saw last year too. There's actually going to be five different iterations to this developer preview uh, as we move into the summer. Uh, with with you know bug fixes and new feature rollouts and and stuff like that. So you know if if you are planning on installing this, it is a lot easier to do so than it was in previous years. But but you really don't want to do it right now if you're doing it on a personal device, and and you probably are only going to do so if if you're either just really interested in testing the new features or you're actually planning to develop against them. Yeah, I uh, my my knee jerk reaction anytime a new version of Android, be it experimental or not, is announced and released, is all right. Well, I'm just gonna you know do it on my on my personal device so that I'm really familiar with it. And of course, along with that comes a handful of uh, you know unintended consequences as a result. So thankfully, instead this time I'm not putting it on my Nexus 6P. I did, however, put it on my Pixel C, which I have right here. And I have kind of installed. Now, the Pixel C has seen a lot of criticism since it was released. This is Android's kind of uh, convertible tablet because you can remove this top top piece and it becomes a tablet or it snaps in and it's got the keyboard. It's seen a lot of criticism for being being made in the in the sense that it would be good for kind of a multitasking uh, usage, like using it as a laptop, but that the software just really isn't uh, isn't designed well enough to make it that good for multitasking do things like the split screen and stuff do that do those things actually improve the usage of the pixel c which i can actually show off while you talk about it yeah absolutely the the multitasking makes a huge difference the way that this is set up it, it uh you know makes a lot of changes as far as being able to just multitask very easily but it also fixes one of my biggest criticisms of the uh the pixel c which was uh, having apps that would force rotation to uh to portrait when you've got it mounted uh, in in the keyboard like it is now mm -hmm. uh, apps like slack and instagram and things like that like ah. it was really just kind of a bummer uh to to get that forced uh forced rotation and there just wasn't anything you could do about it um and instagram is still broken uh, oh go dang that, that was my go-to i was like oh cool I've, this always bugs me <laughs> that, uh, but so it's still that happens it. on an ipad too by the way oh. yeah it happens on everything except samsung tablets because they have multi-window and they can just push everything to the side and that's what will happen once this has been polished out is you'll be able to to reset the orientation to that split screen mode and it'll treat it as though it's in that uh that portrait uh, you know, setup, but it's it's one of those things that is going to require developers to uh, support over time. Google has done a lot of stuff to kind of force it so that it works with a bunch of stuff right now. Uh, but but in order to get you know the the real functionality with some of this uh, this stuff as we move into uh, Android N, it's going to require developers to to follow some of Google's instructions and and do stuff internally. And really, that's going to be a big part of uh, moving into N entirely. There there's so many. Uh, you know, under the surface changes. We're going to have a really detailed analysis tomorrow of the stuff that we've seen so far. But, you know, the way that updates are handled, the way that, uh, you know, manufacturers are going to be pushing their own versions of Android. A lot of that stuff is going to change in very fundamental ways with with N. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to kind of digging into it uh, leading up to next next week's show.